Good evening, judges. Biologically, sex is designed for one main purpose, procreation. Anything else, that's extra. The female reproductive cycle comes around once a month. For a man, it's every day. For each sexual act, the woman's one egg is matched by the man's 120 million sperm cells. Now let's do some calculation. 120 million sperm cells a day, every day, as opposed to one egg a month, every month, means, assuming all the cells are viable, that it will take only 30 men to impregnate all the women in the world. This points to one clear fact. A man is, by nature, polygamous. Monogamy and fidelity are unnatural situations promulgated by religious beliefs and social pressures. Take those away, every man will cheat. It's simply biological. Now let's look at the extra. It's a known fact that women, for the most part, are more emotional than men. So it's natural that after a sexual encounter, she'll be attached. But because a man is visual and logical in nature, there's no emotion involved. For him, it's just a physical release that's got nothing to do with love. A man loves his woman by protecting and providing for her. Period. It's really quite simple. For a man, the physical and the emotional, two separate entities. Thank you. Isaiah 60 and 21 and 22, the points in 22. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So this is talking about when we're set up in the kingdom, a little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. That's talking about the men of Israel. We're going to have so many children. One man is going to have a thousand children. And then another man is going to have so many children. It's going to be like a strong nation. And it's just going to be his children. And each man, we're going to multiply like that. We're going to have children upon children. But like I said, the Lord is going to restore us. He's going to restore us in the kingdom. We're going to get that ancient world stature and strength. We're going to get all that back. And it tells you right there, a little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. That's talking about in the kingdom. And how is that going to happen? That's going to happen through sex. Isaiah, the 60th chapter, I'm going to start at the 10th verse and read on down. It says, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath, I smote thee, but in my favor, have I had mercy on thee. So the sons of strangers, that's talking about the actual strangers, the other nations, shall build up thy walls. We're going to have them in slavery. So they're going to be building the kingdom of heaven because we're not building nothing. We're not lifting a hand to move nothing. It says, for in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. That's talking about the actual Gentiles. We're going to take all of their substance and that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish yea those nations shall be utterly wasted verse 13 and the glory of lebanon shall come unto thee the fir tree the pine tree the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and i will make the place of my feet glorious so the land of israel the land of jerusalem is going to be made glorious it's going to be made glorious once again the kingdom is going to be built up we had a taste of that during the time of Solomon's reign, which was for about 40 years. Verse 14, the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the word Zion means monument, the monument of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations thou shalt also suck the milk of the gentiles and shalt suck the breast of kings meaning we're going to take all this substance and thou shalt know that i am the lord thy power the lord and thy savior and thy redeemer the mighty one of jacob for brass i will bring thee gold and for iron i will bring thee silver and for wood brass and for stones iron and i will make thy officers peace and thine exactors righteousness Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. The sun shall no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light and the power thy glory.
the sun shall no more go down, meaning our kingdom is not going to go down. In other words, once we get back in power, we're going to be in power forever. The sun is never going to go down on our kingdom again. The sun is never going to set on our kingdom. We're going to always be, we're going to always shine and we're going to always be in that glory once we get into the kingdom of heaven. There's no more going back into slavery under the other nations. Esau's not going to rise back up and put us in captivity. Ham, Japheth, Ishmael, none of the other nations are going to rise up and take us down ever again. When we get on top this time, we're going to remain on top. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. So no more mourning, no more crying, no more vexation of spirit, no more weeping, no more hopelessness because of the condition that we're in as Israelites right now. Verse 21, thy people also shall be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand. This is in the kingdom. So what is this talking about? We're going to have sex. Again, like I said, the two thirds that are going to pass in this destruction, the two thirds are going to come back through the one third that make it. The Lord said, two thirds shall be cut off and die. And the third will I bring through the fire. It says a little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel.